Hey guys, Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing a nine month update of Theo. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss any of my future videos. All right, let's get into it. I can't believe we're already here. I have heard from everyone that it flies by, but I cannot even put into words how quickly this has flown. Like it is, it's so sad. <laughs> I'm not ready. I just, I don't know. I wish I could just rewind and start over. I've just enjoyed every single second of Theo. So the fact that he's getting close to a year is just mind blowing. It's crazy. It's exciting. It's sad. It's like all the emotions. But today I wanted to share an update on just everything that has to do with him. I shared one at six months and I think at three months I will link those up in the cards if you're interested in that. Um, this is not a comparison game over here. Every baby is different. Every baby will do different things at different times whenever they're ready, but I'm just going to share what Theo has been up to now that he's nine months. As far as skills go, he obviously can roll all over the place. Um, he is laughing all the time, which is the cutest. He has two teeth now. Actually, his two bottom teeth came in like a day apart from each other. So they, he was definitely teething both of them and then one popped and the next day the next one popped. So it was very quick. He has both of those, but I don't see any others coming in yet. I think his top two in the front will come in next. I think I could be wrong, uh, but I don't even see like the white spots or anything yet. So who knows when that will happen. He now can put his pacifier back in by himself, which is something that we both were really excited for because at night if he lost it before, we'd have to go in and give it back to him. And yeah, now he can just grab it. And I've actually started to just put pacifiers around his crib so that wherever he is at night, it's dark in there so he can't see them. So he can just kind of like grab wherever and he will find a passy and be able to put it back in. He also doesn't like if you put it back in for him, he's like turning into Mr. Independent and I'll just kind of hold it out and then he'll pick it up and put it in. He'll chew on it. He'll chew on the backside. He does all kinds of things with it, but he does not want you to put it in his mouth anymore. So that is something that definitely happened in the past three months. That's new. And yeah, it's just, it's proof that he's learning so many skills and learning something new every single day. It's crazy. He also will grab things from and like move them from hand to hand. So I've noticed, especially if I put him in his high chair to eat, he'll have like his pacifier in and he'll hold it in a hand. And if I have to put his arm through the strap, I'll take one of his hands and he'll move the pacifier to the other hand or whatever it is that he's holding on to. So he definitely has like that skill, which is cool. He also does this like inchworm thing, which I will show you a video of. He's moving his legs, but he hasn't quite figured out, which actually today he did it for the first time, but I'm talking about crawling. Let me get to the point. He will not move his hands one at a time he kind of moves both hands and then pushes his body down and like inchworms across but he gets from room to room doing that so right now if i set him down in the living room and i go into the kitchen he will come into the kitchen so he gets where he needs to go but it's not quite like hands and knees going yet even though he has the skills to do both of those things he just hasn't quite put it together but today he did a couple of times move his hands and his legs so i think that we're like on the verge of an actual more traditional crawl. He's also starting to pull up on things. So he'll crawl over if I'm sitting on the couch. It happens every single morning. I'll sit down on the couch and eat breakfast. So I'm in there with him and he will crawl over or like inchworm over the side of the coffee table over to the couch and like put one hand up and start pulling himself up on it. So he's definitely becoming way more mobile and uh, just learning skills. I feel like he's going to be standing soon and holding himself up on things. It's just, it's crazy. Hey, Dord, you know how? <gasps> One hand at a time. One hand at a time. Yeah. <gasps> Good job. Good job. Wow. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. 
As far as his favorite toys, he loves Sophie the Giraffe. He is constantly chewing on that. Uh, it's definitely like his favorite thing to have every single day. Um, he also really likes his bouncer, which we don't put him in that very often. I actually have it in my office and I'll put it in it for maybe like 10 or 15 minutes a day. Like sometimes it'll be like five minutes here or five minutes there. It's just not that often, but he does love it. And I've been trying to only pull out like one toy at a time so that he doesn't get sick of things and I'll rotate them. So even if he really loves something, I won't have him do it every day because I know he'll get sick of it. So yeah, right now he loves his bouncer. He loves Sophie. He loves having, we have this little mirror from one of our Love Every boxes and I'll just prop it against the couch and he just loves to stare at himself, which is so cute. Um, he still really likes the Love Every play gym. He'll just crawl over to it. He won't lay down under it anymore because I think he's just past that point, but he'll crawl up to it and he'll like bat at all of the crinkle things. He'll feel all of the different textures on it like he definitely still gets a lot of use out of that which was shocking to me because I thought that would be gone by now he loves to play with tags so anything that has a tag a stuffed animal like his little bouncer seat um literally anything that has a tag he will go up and just wants to feel it he really likes to feel textures and like buttons anything like that he's very interested in he also got a little name puzzle for christmas and it just has a few animals and then his name cut out in it and he can pull the letters off of it and he likes to play with those um he can't put them back in yet but that's definitely one of his favorite things right now he also loves cords cords to anything plugs to anything is <laughs> it's like if there is an outlet somewhere he is inchworming his way across the room to get to it. He can have every toy in the world and that does not matter. All he wants is an outlet, a cord, you know, something ridiculous. I'll even bring him in here when I'm getting ready in the morning and he will be on the floor just like playing with a lipstick container or my comb or a hair clip or like the most random things. It's so funny, like everyone says that and it's so true. Babies just like don't care about toys. They really just want ridiculous household items. As far as eating goes, we are doing a combination of purees and baby led weaning and I am still breastfeeding. So he gets breast milk, purees, and just regular table food. And we have tried a lot of different things. He loved French toast. He loved lasagna. He loves pizza. He yeah just a bunch of like random foods like that that we will give him to try he loves fruit like strawberries raspberries he's all for it blueberries basically all the good fruits he loves those honestly i feel like everyone talks about baby led weaning and says that it's easier to do that than it is to do purees or make them something separate and i just disagree with that because right now i usually eat while he's napping or in the morning I'll make myself oatmeal. But yeah, I think that it's easier to just make food while he's napping than it would be to make food and then eat with him. I don't know. Anyway, we we definitely do baby led weaning and I do eat lunch with him probably like four days a week or something. And then dinner, Adam and I eat dinner after he goes to bed. So we never eat dinner at the same time. I don't know. Baby led weaning, like I really want to do it and I do it probably like half the time and then the other half he gets purees because I just don't have the time to to do it. Probably about a month and a half ago, I started giving him some of my oatmeal in the morning. I have oatmeal because it's supposed to help with your milk supply. So I have oatmeal and I put a little bit of peanut butter in it and I kept giving him a little bit. He loved it. And then one day I thought that he had an allergic reaction to it. So I gave him some Benadryl after talking to the pediatrician and we had an appointment that night. We went in and they said that it looked like eczema and it was just like all over his hand. And then he had spots in his his elbows and his knees which I had eczema as a child too so I thought okay great eczema whatever we started putting cream on it cleared up we were good to go and then I but I still hadn't given him peanut butter again 
for a few weeks they said just hold off until everything's cleared up once it is feel free to give him peanut butter again so I did I started just giving him a few bites of it in the morning if I was eating it and he did great he loved it like he was obsessed with the oatmeal and peanut butter and then last week I gave him like quite a bit of mine and uh he was eating it and all of a sudden just hives his lips were swollen his whole neck was red it was so sad and so we gave him Benadryl again and took him into the pediatrician and he's allergic to peanut butter so or peanuts rather so that is a bummer um, I don't know how severe it is or anything like that we have to make an appointment with an allergist and talk to them about introducing new foods just like the other allergens so any other nuts or we haven't given him eggs yet uh, there's just a few other things that are supposed to be like high high allergen items and so i haven't given him any of those since that he also got a prescription for an EpiPen, which is really scary i can't imagine giving that to him but that is where we're at so far as far as that it's just crazy because i did not think that i don't know i guess i just didn't even think that he would have an allergy to that because neither of us do I don't know anyone that does so yeah I just didn't think that that would be a thing but it is so we are dealing with it I also realized that I am like very chill when it comes to allergies because my sister was allergic to dairy for our entire childhood so I was used to her just always carrying Benadryl around with her and us like asking random questions when we went out to restaurants like if she wanted a hamburger like do you grill your buns in butter and she always got pizza without cheese on it and we always went to the specific dairy or the specific ice cream place because they had dole whip which is like a non-dairy thing and she always had to tofu or whatever it's called and that's like the kind of ice cream that she had like there were just so many things that we did as a family when i was growing up that i think allergies i'm just I was just more chill about it than probably other people are because it's just never been like that big of a deal she didn't have anaphylactic reactions so i think that i <laughs> maybe need to not be as chill about it and i'm really pay close attention because yeah everyone's reactions are different and had he had more of it i don't know what his reaction would have been we're not gonna find out around like seven months ish i think we decided to do sleep training which everyone can have their opinion on it that it is what it is everyone has to do whatever works for them but he was not connecting his sleep cycles and it was just a complete disaster over here all of us were sleep deprived and we just needed to figure it out and so we did the fervor method and just kind of changed the timing of it a little bit so that it wasn't i don't know it was easier on me <laughs> um I just listening to him cry was terrible so the first couple of nights it was like pretty bad and then after that he did great and then right around eight months he had another regression and I went back to nursing him at night and he would be up for like two hours every night in the middle of the night no matter what we did we couldn't calm him down and it wasn't even like you could go in there and pat his butt or like rub his head or do anything that would normally calm him down he was not having it so we, we you had to like pick him up to get him to calm down so we did a little sleep training refresh and the first night was not great and then the second night he slept for 11 hours and 45 minutes like <laughs> what it took literally one bad night and now we're right back to sleeping and he's sleeping through the night basically every night there's been I think like two nights that we go in there one time and just like we don't even pick him up or anything we just like rub his back or like rub his head or grab his hand and rub it or something and then walk back out and he's totally fine so yeah he is he's sleeping way better than he was which is great I think now that he's nine months we are going to s switch up the schedule just slightly not anything major but we do follow which I actually wanted to share the schedule that we do with you guys but we do follow a schedule from this book so right now our schedule I think is from like six to eight months and then I think the schedule changes for nine to one year maybe so right now his schedule is he gets up at seven which a lot of times 
he's playing right now with my mom. Um, anyway, right now the schedule or like the dream schedule is he gets up at seven and I nurse him. And then around like eight, eight thirty, he'll have something to eat, like a food, either a table food or a puree. And then at nine 30, he'll go down until 10, 15. I feed him again at 11 and then somewhere around like 11 30 noon, he'll have another meal, like a food meal. He'll go down at 12 30, sleep until 2 30. I feed him, I nurse him at 2 30 and then he'll eat another meal around five, take a bath at six. I nurse him and then he goes to sleep right around 6 45 or so. So that is kind of the schedule right now. But of course that doesn't just work every day. We're kind of playing around with his napping right now and the timing of naps because he's not sleeping all the way until seven right now. He's been getting up somewhere between like 5 30 and 6 30. So we're trying to get him to sleep just a little bit longer. So I think we're going to cut down on the sleep a little bit during the day and see if that works. Every baby is different. Every set of parents are different. It's just you have to do whatever works for you and whatever works for your family and your baby. So that is just currently what's working for us, but things change daily around here. So who knows how long what we're doing right now will work. I'm sure we'll have to make adjustments as we go, just like we have since he was born. Alrighty guys, that is everything that's kind of new and going on with Theo right now. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you if you are expecting or have a little one or just find it interesting. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.